Can we save China? Well, let's hope so. Welcome back to the Amazing Education Station, the channel that gives you the information you need to know and gives you some boring video. Yeah, so it's about the information. It's going to benefit you. It's not education for watching. It's just for pretty much for listening to. So today's topic is can we save China? And uh, China is a big puzzle. Why is it in such a mess? I lived in China. I'm a master educator. This is not financial advice, not legal advice, not medical advice. Uh, just please thumbs up, like, and subscribe if this helps you understand the world and gives you knowledge. Knowledge is power. Power corrupts. Oops. Well, <laughs> uh, anyway, it, it's good to be more powerful. The closer you align your thinking with reality, the better you're going to do. Hopefully you don't get too powerful. It's not power that corrupts, it's absolute power that corrupts absolutely. But uh, everybody should have some power to protect their rights. Speaking of rights, you know in China, you don't have the right to own the land, even if you build a house on it. Yeah, so it's a big problem. One of the reasons why they have uh, difficulty over in that country but it's a lot more complicated than that. And, you know, can China improve? Well, let's hope so. And they might be able to. Uh, they are studying Western law traditions. But the thing is, so China, you know, it's incredibly heavily populated and people are just scrambling to live. And they've been doing it for decades, just trying their best just to survive. And it shows really the, you know, the wonder and the, the reason that people developed things like birth control, like safe abortions, instead of people dying from abortions, that they're going to get, you know, they will get them if it's not safe, if it's not legal. And people's daughters will die when they secretly get abortions for, you know, illegal abortions if we make them illegal. It's it's going to happen. So just think, would you rather have your daughter miserable, wanting to kill herself, and then going to a criminal to get an operation which eventually kills the child and her, or would you rather her be rather have her healthy and survive by allowing legal, careful abortion access so now i'm not saying you have to pay for it the government is all mixed up you know we never have really good government but um it's maybe one positive thing about china is it's because they know they've been overpopulated then people are not forced to have children if they've been raped if something happened when their birth control failed and so on when they weren't trying to have a child and then they got p pregnant so you can you can solve that problem and you think okay your opinion well you believe in human rights protecting humans okay but somebody comes to your house and starts eating your food and you probably believe given that you don't know them and they've entered your house that you have the right to shoot them especially people living in Florida. I bet you believe that. So an uninvited guest, I won't even call them a guest, comes into your house because one time you forgot to lock the door. Do you have a right to kill this thief? That maybe you're in the house when they enter to eat the food. Well, in most places, you've got a right to do, to do something to get that person at least out of your house. If the person dies because of them not being in your house, maybe you have some special medicine that that's going to save their life, but it's yours. You have the right to your medicine, whatever it is. So basically an uh, unwanted threat to your life, taking from you, it's legal to get rid of this. And it's a perfect equivalent to an unwanted pregnancy you tried to stop and you know you didn't expect someone okay you never lock your doors someone just comes in 
start stealing your stuff. You know, well, you might be stupid, but you've got the right to defend your life, defend your home, and defend your body. And then hopefully next time you'll prevent the pregnancy and, and so on and so forth. But, you know, it's a woman's body, it's her life, and an extra life suddenly growing inside. Well, yes, I believe that uh, people should be married and they shouldn't just be having unmarried sex, all that. You can talk about all the things people should do, but truth is they're going to break the law. Just, just like with drugs, you look at um, countries that try to treat illegal drugs as more of a societal illness they want to treat the person instead of punish the person and those countries do a lot better less crime less violence less killing when you go to war on drugs or war on abortion or war whatever then you're gonna have people with guns and shooting and things you know it's it's illegal so you're putting money into the criminals pockets instead of into a legal business and we've finally woken up in many states and said okay well we're going to legalize marijuana because we don't want so many criminals you know let's make it a legitimate business take the guns and weapons and all the death out of the situation and it's going to improve things so even though i'm not pro drugs i don't like drugs and don't use them and um never gotten high or anything like that so now back to china so yeah they have a human rights problem it's all related china is just amazing so there are crimes there so they have severe war against drugs and criminals you know you commit certain crimes which maybe don't endanger people's lives you haven't killed anybody but you do enough um wrong and that's it you could be on death row they harvest your organs and give them to other people that need your organs and they just they just say like oh you know what you're a problem for society now um it there are some things that it does for China which is crime can be very low it's you know it's like severe punishment wow you know you do this but then on the other hand you don't have to kill so many people if you take a look at Japan so Japan is an incredibly peaceful society and you could have a, a bar tavern whatever you want to call it pub in Japan and the beer is stored in open ca uh, uh, open cases of beer and liquor stored outside during the night, any day of the year. And uh, it's just sitting there, somebody could walk up and steal it and they don't. So Japan, it's incredible. You gotta look at that culture. But um, China's a different story. Um, it's the most populated the most polluting country on the planet please comment like and subscribe comment about that because you might think oh no the united states pollutes the most well hmm really we drive the most cars per capita we probably own the most cars so individually we are the most polluting individuals but not as a country we don't produce as much pollution because you go to china you can hardly see four blocks away because it's like, uh, well, it's smog, basically. You think it's clouds or fog, but it's, no, it's actually mostly coal smoke. And it's just absolutely terrible for their health. But this is, so when you have a socialist communist government where things are owned by the government, businesses are owned by the government and run by the government, they run it to their advantage and not to the advantage of the people living in the dirty cities and whatnot and it's the government you can't so easily change them with a lawsuit partly because they don't understand individual rights they have this collectivist group think 
which goes back to uh, you know ancient philosophy and their culture. So, as I said, it's incredibly polluted. Over a million and a half people each year are dying from their air pollution alone, not to mention cancers and whatnot from the other chemical pollution, because as many people understand, they've sort of become the factory of the world. And, uh, you know, like the biggest amount of production of any country is probably in China with such cheap labor. But their labor costs are rising, and um, so can it be fixed? Well, let's hope that they learn. Now, I would say we don't want people so much to come to other countries from China and stay in those other countries. Let's have a situation where they end up going back after some time so they can maybe take some kind of uh, government, uh, not exactly citizenship classes, but understand like how maybe some clean, um, healthy, wealthy country operates whether it's a European country or whatever. Now, the United States, we have such high crime over here. I don't recommend they really follow our culture. You know, we've got the highest uh, incarceration rate, the largest percentage of people in jail compared to uh, other countries. You know, per, per 100 people, that's the percentage part of it. So I think we've got more people in prison and jail uh, compared to our population because we we keep on pushing freedom 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 but we don't teach like respecting rights as much and uh, but we're still probably compared to the cost of living we might still do the best we don't have the highest income but our cost of living is pretty good so it comes out like life might be sort of the wealthiest over here and we definitely have the largest economy in part because of the size of our country but china they have what over 1.3 billion people in china but there's not much land for each individual person and so it comes down to a point where like gosh do they have enough food and millions have starved maybe up to 100 million people with the um terrible policies of the CCP, which is a Chinese Communist Party, back in the 60s, uh, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, and uh, in a similar way to North Korea, except um, China figured things out and they, they turned around drastically so to allow business and wealth, but they still have that problem. And so, um, <laughs> which is basically um, monopolistic government when you have just one party. See, that's the problem. You gotta have separate parties so that people have choice and then they're gonna choose, they might even make the wrong choice and then, oh, that's really not good. So they replace the bad choice and then they have a better result in the future. And when they have a better result in the future, then the, you know, the party making bad decisions changes their so-called platform, it changes the ideas that they promote to be a lot better so that they can get elected. And they might still have bad ideas, but they should study philosophy. I recommend objectivist philosophy. Take a look at Ayn Rand and um, also very good in economics. Read um, Hayek, H-A-Y-E-K or even check out some Milton Friedman and, um, and uh, check out what Elon Musk is doing these days. He's a good business person and, um, you know, Tesla is doing really, really well. And uh, so take a look at that. So ho hopefully China can improve. China now, it does have Tesla operating over there, but um, the question is, can the uh, philosophy and the population problem be solved in China? And it could be hundreds of years. It, you know, these things, they don't change quickly, especially when they're, you know, old traditions. The problem is they tried this new Marxist communist tradition and it, 
it blasted them very badly. And without enough food to have um, good healthy brains, good IQ, when ch children are developing, they can't learn as much and uh, they might not even have time to go to school if they have to uh, work on the farms or whatever. That is also changing, so that's one bright hope there as they industrialize. But they have to reduce their pollution because they're, if they're always struggling with health, that's not good. They're still building coal-fired power plants. That's why I recommend boycotting large um, products from China and um, just cut back your spending if you can of Chinese products because we don't want them so industrialized and polluting and killing their killing themselves basically because it's a you know like a unified system and they're all about peacefulness and going along together but look what it's gotten them you know it's uh, very tragic so hopefully as i said they can bring their population down go to renewables solar and wind power and they're doing it in fact you could say that their top in the world in renewable uh, power products, the solar panels and electric cars and batteries, very good with batteries. So they, they might have more geniuses in the country than any other country on the planet. So hopefully the geniuses can uh, turn their philosophy around and the culture around, uh, stop the population problems. And China could be a wonderful country. But it could take years, could take decades, might even take centuries. And uh, it's really hard to say because the interior of the country is not really wealthy like the coastal areas. And um, without the wealth and the education, they have censorship there. And uh, it's just, I can't, can't support them. That's why I say boycott their large products and uh, with censorship, unless they get rid of their censorship, then, you know, it's hard to ever support them because you don't know the truth. And uh, control of information like the United States is trying right now under the Biden Democratic Liberal um, Administration, it's the worst thing that you can do to a country. So stop the censorship, vote against liberal in, unless you can uh, have somebody commit to being against censorship and um, believe me I'm not conservative but I'm also not a liberal okay well anyway I hope this helps if you know Chinese people tell them to uh, read some objectivism philosophy 